the intriguing thing about inflammation is up until recently, it was all about heart disease. And that happened in the 1990s, where first it, it, it became apparent that your, the, a person's white blood cell count within the normal range was a predictor of heart attack risk. But the next step after that was the discovery that inflammation predicts uh, your, your chances of, of developing diabetes, type 2 diabetes in the future. And now we're looking at a whole host of chronic diseases ranging from Alzheimer's disease to many of the common forms of cancer. And you know, inflammation is, but it's such a vague concept. It's very hard, and there's no one single number that one can measure. It makes it hard to, to get a lot of granularity to that. So, when, but what dietary steps can one take to modify or lower their level of inflammation? Well, the, the one that everybody knows about is fish oil. Okay. It's anti-inflammatory. And that is thought to be part of the mechanism by which a moderate intake of fish or supplementing the diet with a modest amount of the so-called fish oil omega-3 fats is associated with a reduced risk of, of having a heart attack. Or have, if you do have a heart attack, a reduced risk of sudden death as a result of that heart attack. So the omega-3 fats are, have garnered a whole lot of attention and certain popular authors have written whole books about that that have been sold to the public as being the big picture about inflammation. But it's actually much more complex than that. We, you know, it's clear that fruits and vegetables that have a lot of color contain things that are generally called anthocyanins um, or polyphenols, which have, are known to have anti-inflammatory properties and, and um, beneficial effects when included in the diet. But the really intriguing observation is one that has been predominantly done in studies uh, in Jeff's lab. When we look at well-formulated low-carbohydrate diets in comparison to a well-formulated balanced diet, both of which contain a, a, a reasonably comparable amounts of fruits and vegetables. So it's not a difference in fruits and vegetables. The one that comes out ahead in reducing inflammation is the carbohydrate-restricted diet. And so the concept almost is turn it the other way. Carbohydrates may be pro-inflammatory. Taking away carbohydrates brings the body back to its naturally, more naturally uninflamed state. And the role of fruits and vegetables in both diets is positive, but the fruits and vegetables may be much more necessary on a high carbohydrate diet because of the pro-inflammatory effects of the carbs. Now this is pure heresy, when you state, but the data supports this perspective. Am, am I wrong in that? Or? I think you're right on. <laughs>